Welcome. It's quite a miracle that we're here because to say that my guest and I have had some problems connecting would be the understatement of the century. I met Marek Kazmierski uh, a few weeks ago because I wanted to talk to him about something really exciting that he's done. He's translated a childhood Polish classic, Academia Pana Kreksa, uh, Kreksa uh, into English to get it to the wider world. And when I met him, I discovered that Marek, Pan Marek, was on quite a mission. Or oh, not a one-man mission, actually, because he's not alone. But he is on a passionate, enthusiastic, incredible kind of Academia Panaclexic style mission to get Polish literature great out to the wider world. Marek, welcome to Heart of Poland. Hello, dzień dobry. Uh, Marek, you're going to have to explain why you're in a car because I think you're the first ever guest of Heart of Poland who's been in a vehicle. Uh, I am speaking to you, welcome, from Gura Kalvaria, New Jerusalem, which is near Warsaw. This is my home and it's been a very, very long journey to get here. But Wi-Fi in Poland isn't widely available and I'm parked outside the lovely library and is the only place in town that I have Wi-Fi. Therefore, I'm in a car like a proper nomad, barred, traveling uh, storyteller. Now, Marek, I'm going to show immediately uh, the really quite wonderful present that you gave me, which I immediately went home and shared with my children. So I'd originally wanted to talk to you about the magic of uh, Jan Jekfer's Academia Panaclesa. But let's just get down the whole chronology of how it is that you're on this one man mad mission to bring these literature greats to the wider world again or for the first time. It's a bit of a sad story. So let's start with the bad news. History has been most unkind to this place called Poland. It's been occupied, partitioned, and um, really, really given a good slap by history because it's right on the border between East and West, at Europe and Asia. But that produces great storytelling, great stories. And Polish poets, singers, songwriters, writers of fable like Jan Brzechwa, who during the Second World War wrote a book called Professor Ingblot's Academy, the proto-Harry Potter, a book about a young boy who joins a magic academy. 1946, and it's only just been translated into English. Fancy that. Uh, by you? Indeed, sir. Yes, I've done and, it. Uh, can you just explain what role uh, this work occupies in, in Polish culture? Because it's probably uh, the, the 80s film Crazy. Uh, I think it was the 80s. Yeah. Well, uh, it was 81. Some of the maddest stuff I've ever seen in my life. Um, the songs from that film, unbelievably catchy, whilst also simultaneously really, really weird. The lyrics are absurd and fantastic and wonderful. Can you just try and get some of the quite extraordinary magic in there uh, to our viewers now if they don't know uh, that particular work? Yes, a big shout out to the Jewish community in Poland. They've been here for a thousand years, which is as old as Poland itself. And Jan Brzechwa, the author of this uh, Mr. Inglot's Academy, Pan Academia Panaklexa, was born as Jan Lesmian, uh, Jan Victor Lesmian. His father, uh, grandfather, was a teacher at the uh, synagogue in Warsaw. And he's one of many, Julian Tuvim, uh, Zuzanna Ginchanka, uh, so many writers of Jewish heritage who've contributed to Polish letters. But because of history and all these wars, we don't really have much um, presence of the Jewish community left in Poland. The place I'm parked in right now called New Jerusalem, Gura Kalvaria, used to have 80% Jewish community. Now it's a handful. Uh, the synagogue is falling down and the stories that these people told are amazing. So Jan Brzechwa writes a story about a school of magic of magic learning, inspired by his experience of studying um, in a Jewish school in um, Lviv, I believe. And um, yes, for many years, Poland has been exporting martyrology, um, all these failed uprisings, all these wars, all these turbulent stories, but so little of these crazy songs. Welcome to our fable, where Dumbo plays the maple. And, um, <laughs> you know, Jikis, that's where Jikis are. Um, all these wonderful, joyful songs. And I believe that Polish people have teeth. 
but you never see them because even when they smile, they do it through gritted lips. So I'd <laughs> like the world to realize that in Poland, it's not just Miłosz and Herbert writing about existentialism, but some beautiful poetry for children, some popular songs and some great fables going back centuries from Aesop, from La Fontaine. And my superpower is translating them into English. How did you get to have this superpower? Um, and you mentioned Polish Harry Potter, so I'm going to ask two questions, which is, uh, do, do, do some people associate this particular work with Harry Potter? Well, you see, Harry Potter was written 20 years ago, and the Polish Harry Potter, this Academia Panaklexa, was written 75 years ago. So is there a relationship? No, there isn't. There's, it's never <laughs> into it. It's a very different book. Harry Potter is all about death. It's all about passing. It's about no longer being a child. Whereas Academia Panaklexa, this amazing, amazing book, which you can get for free from the website that I set up. You can download it anytime and print it or read it on your computer. 74 years we've been waiting for this. It's a story about a young boy who joins a school where he discovers his own potential through teamwork, through understanding the stories of the world, geography, and is inspired to be a leader. He's inspired to be a storyteller. It's the most wonderful, uplifting book, unlike Harry Potter, which has many dark elements and is a fantastic, fantastic achievement. But it's so very different and so very un-Polish. So now I'll get back to the question, which is, I mean, again, I was so interested in the story, but was it, how did you get here? How did you get to the point where you're sitting there at night after night f debating, thinking about words, coming, you know, coming up with alternative translations? It's, it's a pretty tiring process, isn't it? My grandfather used this watch during the Second World War. My father was born during the Second World War. I was born during communism and I survived the military law of 1981 and then became a child refugee. I got political asylum in 1985 in London because my mother was involved in solidarity movement, which helped end communism in Europe. And so I've been shaped by turbulent and dangerous warring narratives. And five years ago, after 30 years of living in England, working in prisons, refugee centers, running art centers, writing, publishing, teaching, I moved to Poland to see if anyone here was interested in exporting these pearls of Polish poetry and song, these joyful, joyful songs, fables, novels that I've translated. I have the biggest book in the world in my hands, which I've translated, 2020 poems from Poland, uh, no one's interested in publishing it because who cares? It's Polish poetry. It's got to be dark. <laughs> I have quite a mission, yes, uh, to show that Polish people have teeth and to make the world smile when they hear the word Polska. Because I remember I had a conversation right at the start of Heart of Poland. You guys can go back with Stanley Bill. Uh, one of the co-editors of Notes from Poland uh, shouts out to all our fans from there. And I think if I'm going to paraphrase him, sorry, Stanley, if I misquote you, but he said he did say something quite like, you know, Polish literature from the 20th century is pretty much all difficult, dark, horrible stuff, you know, really, really concerned with the tragic past of, of Poland. And yet you're saying that that's not the case. It's not. Um, Mr. Hillary runs and fusses, where on earth are my eyeglasses? A locomotive stands at the station, huge, heavy huffing, with perspiration, a greasy sensation. Julian Tuvim, this amazing poet of love poetry, erotic poetry, but children's poetry also, and so many songs. Don't get me started, because I'll start singing. <laughs> I'll be launching the biggest anthology of children's poetry from Poland um, online. You can download it free, print it or read it on computers because I love it. Poetry is like champagne. It's not every day. You shouldn't read it from morning till evening like you shouldn't have champagne every day because it's not special anymore. It's not fiction. It's not beer. But if you have champagne from time to time during special events, it makes those events super special. And that's what poetry and song is for those special moments in life when nothing else will do.
So let's go back to the actual process, uh, Marek. Are you pouring over these words? Do you feel like some of the magic gets lost or is it different but better? And, and is it for Vaisnam Sosha to quote a bit of Yamshek for uh, something else entirely when it comes out of the translation sausage machine? Translating Polish is something that comes to me from the cosmos. I'm able to do it. I love it. I can do it quickly. I've translated Mickiewicz, Szymborska, all the Polish Nobel Prize winning poets. They're all in here. I've translated them all. And then I've translated Zulczyk and Dorota Masłowska in Polish hip hop. I'm not going to start. Thinking, but um, I could. I could if you want. But it's exporting it. Is it without swearing? Can we have some? Polish hip hop without swearing? Not Polish hip hop. Um, you need a beat, and I'm white, so hello, you know. I, I <laughs> grew up in Peck in London, you know, I'm a bit working class and all that. But <laughs> people don't like that. Love will forgive you, my darling, all your transgressions and sins. Love will forgive you, my darling, because love, darling lover, is me. It's one of the most famous songs in Polish, and nobody in Poland knows that who wrote it. Um, there is something horrible about Polish education. It teaches Polish people to be hard drives, full of information with very slow processes that they cannot use. And my mission is to replace it, to upgrade it, to give it wings. Because love of femme fatale that is Poland, it's not an easy place to live. Anyone who lives here knows that. But I wouldn't have it any other way. It's the most special, crazy, passionate, dark and fantastic place on earth. Wow, guys, uh, this program is called Heart of Poland. And I do believe that Marek Kazmierski is touching little places of that heart more than Many other guests I've heard today. Barbara has written Jinkwe, which means thank you in Polish. Uh, I, I, ooh, I shivers up my spine there. Now, um, do you feel like these greats are underread? Because I don't know what happens to teenagers. Do they get to sit and read the greats in the same way that, say, an English uh, school people would read Shakespeare? Let me tell you a simple story. Shakespeare, um, you know, Ginsberg, the great poets of the world, English world, didn't write for children, but in Poland, because there was no Poland during the 18th, 19th century. Uh, poetry for children was a way to keep alive the Polish spirit. And great poets like Adam Mickiewicz, um, the sage of Poland, the Polish Shakespeare, they wrote for children all the time. Polish children are raised on the most beautiful poetry, but then school murders that in them because they have to pass exams and go through all kinds of hell in school. And this is a very cruel twist of fate. This is why none of them believe that what I'm trying to do is possible, because they learn to hate poetry. But it's like Chopin. Who knows in Poland that Chopin wrote 20 beautiful songs? And they've never been performed and translated in English until now, because I'm working with a wonderful singer in Gura Kalwaria, in Mazovia, in Poland, very close to the capital. She's going to be singing them for you, 20 beautiful songs by Chopin in English that no one has heard before. There's an airport named after the guy. The Chinese, the Japanese, the Koreans, Americans love Chopin. And we don't export that stuff. That tells you something about Polish lack of faith in themselves. They well, travel the world with Kabanosi, with vodka, with <laughs> black and white movies that get nominated for Oscars. Cold War, this and that, you know, Schindler's List. But where's the comedies? Where's the musicals? They're all here. Uh, I, Marek's passion is second to none. Uh, as an effervescent person, I feel like th this is something that we can all sign up to uh, because but he here's the thing, Marek. Okay, so I've been living in Poland for 10 years. I speak pretty good Polish, I'd say, relatively speaking. I read pretty well, a little bit slowly. Don't really know any of the greats. You know, like uh, I've got um, Joe says here, very surprising that Chopin had written poems. I'm, I'm completely blown away. Never really got my teeth stuck into them. You know, when I read oh. Oscar translated into English, 
I didn't quite cot post the can you so a cat in an empty flat. It left me a little bit cold. So I'm going to play the role of a skeptic person saying here, like, ah, but Nyadasha in it's not possible to to capture the magic. It it'll come out of the bottle. It's all here online, and you can download it free of charge. You can see it on YouTube very soon. This is a poem Chopin wrote. Frederick Chopin, Frederick Chopin, Poland's most famous son, son of Warsaw, Gladwell lad. My translation. Premier. I played a lot and then danced the trot, cotillon and contra dance. Then I hear Amazru play. As I slide forward, my reg folds all the pain. I fall to the ground, my lady dance partner, now nowhere to be found. What's this? I can't stand. Why pray beg? I must have broken my leg. What's this? Everyone confused. A cramp, cries a lady, less than amused. <laughs> Mama is scared. Papa cannot breathe. Another dame cries, get him on the settee. Everyone lifts me off the ground on the city I'm carried around. And someone ruthless beyond belief keeps pressing and squeezing my poor knee. The Mazurek stopped. Pity, a pity we did sigh. A doctor was sought, but a barber arrived. <laughs> then my leg he did rub, press and squeeze, bandage grab. My teeth clenched, the pain dread. Down the stairs they carried me to a carriage and back home delivered damaged. Oh, I lay still a long while, but that is now past. As I sing to you, please smile. The pain is not meant to last. If not that mishap, bad and sad, I would have been a Gladwell lad. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to give a thumbs up, a heart, uh, a like, a sub, or just a clap wherever you are around the world. Uh, who knew that Chopin had that in him? Big shout out to Katarzyna Huzarchub, who's just published a book about the young Chopin. I've translated it into English. It's all about how vivacious he was. He had a theater, he wrote poetry, he uh, drew caricatures of his uh, school teachers, which were so good, they were very impressed. They were not upset with him. He was amazing. And we think of him as this dark, tragic creature. This tragic poem, guy, yeah. If I hadn't had that accident, I would have been a Gladwell lad. And now I sing to you, please smile. Frederick Chopin says Poland can do it. Yeah. He said it, and he did suffer. There was no Poland at his time. And he loved Poland and his heart all alone came back here to Warsaw. I please beseech you, Poland, let my song travel the world. So uh, you've already mentioned several times, Marek, that people can download this compendium of over 2,000 works by all the greats that you have personally translated on behalf of Poles around the world. And I guess there's obviously a very large Polish-American, Polish-English community that maybe doesn't speak good enough Polish to be able to get their teeth into these works. So this is really for them. Very much so. I've been translating for 10 years. No one pays me to do this. I don't have a university. I don't have a rich wife. I don't have any sponsors. I do it in a car. <laughs> Mitskevich, the book that I gave you, I translated in this very old car. So you have the biggest book of poems in the world, 2020. 1,010 originals and 1,010 translations into English. I'm not giving you that whole thing because nobody can read that. But you can download individual poems and the fairy tales of the classics. Belza, Fredro, uh, this lovely poem. Paul and Gold lived in a single home. Paul lived upstairs and Gold down below. Paul was a quiet fellow. He never bothered a soul. But Gold, his sole neighbor, he was crazy though. Paweł i gawał w jednym żyli domu. Paweł na górze i gawał na dole. This story of Polish neighbors is so true and so relevant today. Everyone knows it in Poland, but they just don't believe that they can sort it out, that they can scratch each other's backs, that they can do what the English naturally do is just smile, stiff up a lip. So my mission is to make Polish people think English. And then speak Polish because it's a beautiful language and then communicate by translations. Polish people are so desperate to learn English. I teach a lot of people here and yet they're so scared of opening their mouths. 
I love them to bits, but they just need a big old hug. <laughs> Magda has written here, thank you. And I think that's very much to you, Marek. Monica has written great stuff as always, but Monica, with all due respects, I've never really talked about the great Polish uh, authors. Mm, uh, and here we have over 2,000 Polish poems and stories. So Marek, I think it's now time for you to reveal where someone can download uh, these stories, give them to their kids, help them reignite a love, or maybe just ignite for the first time a love for Polish authors if they don't speak good enough Polish to be able to do that. We are now living in difficult times because of the economy, ecology, and of course, the covid re and all the things that are interconnected. Okay, Poland's been through it, invaded by the Swedes, the Tatars, the Germans, the fascists and the communists. Everybody hates Poland because it's so beautiful and it's so rich in stories. It's had a hard time. GiveTheWorld.org. I put my hand in my own pocket, got my British credit card, set up a website. Give the world Polish poems and songs and fables. GiveTheWorld.org. And through this project, I will be sharing the songs of Chopin, the fables of La Fontaine in translation, Sabawa, the great Highlander storyteller, and the poems, which really rock. Bambo, the black boy, lives in Africa. His skin is black, as black as black as star. Jaka szkoda, że bambo, czarny, wesoły, nie chodzi razem z nami do szkoły. The most controversial poem in Polish history, a beautiful love song to diversity by Julian Tuvin about what a shame it is that a black son of Africa does not go to school with us because at the time, a hundred years ago, there was no black people to be seen on the streets of Warsaw. Today, Poland is multicultural again. Poland, once again, is facing massive challenges and lots and lots of problems, lots and lots of violence, lots and lots of anger. I say that poetry is bajeczki jak szczepioneczki na smuteczki. <laughs> a fable a day keeps the darkness at bay. <laughs> you pop one of these poems in your head once a day. You sing yourself a song. Siądź do pociągu byle jakiego. Nie dbać o bagaż, nie dbać o bilet. Dni, których jeszcze nie znamy. I beseech you, Poles. Go to this website, download the free content, get it out to the world. You're not going to believe that people will smile, but they will. And they'll come back to you with that story to make you believe that Poland can do it. Show its teeth and believe in itself. That's the mission. Marek, how, you've already mentioned, how, how do people react when you share this on and people download these things? How do they react? I presume this standard reaction is, oh, I thought it's all, you know, sort of, cat in and murders in the forest and you know dark gloom and actually i didn't realize how playful some of this stuff is so very playful Wisława Szymborska wrote so many joyful poems about being an onion about growing old and she won the Nobel prize she's one of my favorites and then there's the tragic Zuzanna Ginczanka a remarkable poet who died in the war victim of the holocaust but she wrote some of the most beautiful children's poems which are there for you to download they're on youtube it's a mystery to me why poland continues to be perceived in this way but it is to do with self image and i respect that I really do. I've worked in prisons, refugee centers, psychiatric units. I've myself, a former child political refugee and asylum seeker. I discovered that a thousand years ago in Chersk, an English uh, prince, Magnus Haraldson, the son of the last English king, independent king of, of Anglo-Saxon England, ruled here. And nobody knows locally that they had an English duke ruling in the... Uh, Wyvern Castle, just around the corner. Something tells me in this very dark time, this may be a moment for Poland. And I'm going to launch these 100 fables, do the YouTube next year, 2020 poems on YouTube, try and create a radio station, a stage show. The people of Gura Calvaria have been so helpful and so supportive. I landed here a couple of months ago. It's a small town with a huge amazing multicultural Jewish history. Uh, I love it to bits. It's a hard ride and it's a hard sell. But Polish jewels, the Polish diamonds of poetry, are you can't wear them away. 
They are timeless and brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, Marek is quite the diamond himself, isn't he? I haven't had a guest like this for a long time. Monica's written, where can I find this website? So it's on the screen right now. It's givetheworld.org. This is absolutely brilliant. I am Polish and I'm in a relationship with a Scotsman. His family is very keen to learn about Poland. But as you know, there are not a lot of resources. Uh, brackets, thefirstnews.com, baby, because there's plenty there. I love to share Polish poetry, music and movies with them. Thanks for that. So Monica is exactly the type of person you're trying to reach, Marek, and she probably didn't know about this before this episode. So, uh, Monica, we highly encourage you to go and do that. And Bojena, Magda, and all the other people, uh, Bata as well, writing here. Um, Marek's done this for Poland. Yet another poll going through hell, but actually seem seemingly enjoying it uh, at the same time. So, Marek, thank you very much for joining us. Any final parting words for our viewers? Winston Churchill said something about Poles. Poles are the best at winning the war and the best at losing the peace. When we finish fighting, we need another fight. But what he also said about hell, when going through hell, keep going. I'm going to set up a YouTube channel, which is already there, Give the World. I'm going to put all these translations so people can hear them. 100 this year, 2020 next year. Uh, please come and visit, come and share, come and download, come and feedback. Academia Panaclex, so you can get it anytime you like, print it at home, um, free of charge, read it on your computer. This is Poland's moment. And those stories have just been at the back of the literature cupboard of the world. Maybe now is the time. Help me get them out to a bigger audience because they're just so much fun and so clever, written by some genius writers. They went through hell to bring them to you. And let's not waste that potential and pleasure. <coughs> Absolutely. Marek Kazminski, thank you very much for being one of the most innovating, energetic, enthusiastic guests of Heart of Poland I think we've ever had. If you're interested in the story of Chopin, you can check out the Heart of Poland episode special two-part series that I did with Michael Moran. But of course, you can go and check out the poems he actually wrote now in English. And I bet your bottom dollar you didn't know about them. If you're interested in that interview with Stanley Bill, you can also go and check it out on thefirstnews.com. It is the premier English language location excuse me, for English language stuff about Poland. But now you know, you can visit givetheworld.org. So, ladies and gentlemen, please share this episode and I'll see you again for another episode of Heart of Poland.